So, anyway, when, when I get an email address, I'll send the article and Prabhu can forward it to all of you because we don't have time to read it in the class. We need to use the time in the class for other things. You'll have to read the article on your own, but it's very interesting, a very relevant article. It's all about the Ishopanishad. Okay, so we're a bit behind time here. We didn't finish the first section. We'll go on to screen sharing, right? So, you can share screen. Huh? You can share, you can share the screen, Maharaj. I'm share, I've shared it already, right? I'm just going to open it now. Uh, Desktop, uh, fine. less than one. Okay, is everybody can see this? Yes, Maharaj. The document is set to open, Maharaj. Huh? PowerPoint is not yet open, Maharaj. PowerPoint's not open? No. Uh, you have to share the PowerPoint, Maharaj. I, I That's what I just did. No. Oh. Okay, so I have to do it again. So I have to come out, share screen. Okay. Are you, sh are you sharing, sharing my screen now? Not no, yet, Maharaj. Not yet. Maharaj. What do I have to do? Maharaj, you have opened the PPT, Maharaj. Like you have opened the PPT? Yes, I opened it. Then you have to share it. You have to share the opened one only. Maharaj. Well, look. I, I go to screen sharing, right? Yes, Maharaj. And I click the green light. Yes. And after that you have to select that file, Maharaj, the one which is open. Now I press the green light. Are you sharing my screen? No, no unless, you, unless you click uh, the, the file, PowerPoint file, and then say, then it will share, Maharaj. After sharing the green button of share, Maharaj, then you have to go to the... PPT which is open and click there Maharaj and then say share. Okay, do you see it now? Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. come now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh God, let me see. Okay, Sri Ishopanishad, right? We're lesson one. This is what we should have done this morning. So we covered the three proofs, the three pramanas, pradyaksha, anuman, and shabda. Okay, from Prabhupada's lecture, you heard about those things, and we heard about the importance of hearing, shabda. Hearing from authority. Okay?
I think you're all familiar with this. Can you see the picture? The blind yes, what the blind men are massaging the elephant. Right? Six blind men are massaging the elephant. The one man is massaging the leg, he thinks it's like a tree. The other man is massaging the side of the elephant, he thinks it's like a wall. The other man has got the trunk, he thinks it's like a snake. He's got the tusk, he's got an arrow. He's up here, got the ear, he thinks it's like that hatchet. And on the back here, the man has got the tail, he thinks it's like a rope. So, are they wrong? They're not wrong, but they only see a part, they're only describing one part of the elephant. So the same way people are studying the Absolute Truth, and they only know a part of the Absolute Truth. They don't know all the aspects of the Absolute Truth. For example, they may know the, the light, they know the, in, the light, the all-pervading light, or they may know the sun planet, but they don't know the sun God. So that's the difference, right? So this is the, the relevant example, that people are studying God, they only know some aspect of God. They don't know the full detail of God. Parampara system, Bhagavad Gita, right? We're trying to preach the message of Bhagavad Gita according to Parampara. So the four defects we covered this morning, commit mistakes, illusion, cheating, and imperfect senses. Here's the Sanskrit words, Brahma Pramada Vipralipsa and Karana Patava from the Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila mentioned there. Now here's an interesting picture, maybe you've seen this before, it's often presented. Some people look at this picture and they, what do you see? Is it a young woman or is it the old woman? Right? Can you yes. see can you see the young woman? Yes, Maharaj, Maharaj. Right? Can you describe the young woman to me? Black hair and she's wearing a feather or something. Yeah, she's got something on her hair. Yes, right? feather. A feather. And has she got anything around her neck? A black or round, like dresses, black color, round something, fur. Some but something around her neck. Yes. Right? You see that? So that's a young woman. What about the old woman? Do you see the old woman? Yes, sir. What was around the neck? That becomes the mouth of the oh. old woman. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. And, the, oh. and the chin of the young woman becomes the nose of the old woman. <laughs> right? So, so this Maharaj, and uh, the neck of the young lady is the jaw of the old women. Yes, right. Okay. The neck. Okay, so this is a common example to show how, you know, people see. One person sees a young woman, somebody else sees an old woman. It's going to be different, it's not the same for everyone. Imperfect senses. Look at this picture. It appears, you know, the, 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 the square within the circle, they don't look straight. They appear to be bent, but actually they're straight. The illusion. Another one, these lines also appear to be bent, but they're all parallel. The lines, the lines going across from top to bottom, they're parallel, but they don't appear to be parallel. It, 
they appear to be coming and bending, going away from each other. So, this is a different present. And here you can see the, these, uh, they, they all appear to be moving. They, they seem to be almost rotating. It's like there's a motion there, but they're perfectly still. And here's uh, something. Commit mistakes, right? Do you see that one? Where's he going? He's getting up, the, going up the stairs. There's no plane there. He's just going up the stairs. <laughs> Everyone else is going up, up the stairs into the plane, but he's going up the other stairs. He's, there's, no, there's no plane there. So imperfect, that's making a mistake. Okay, we're not going to discuss this tonight. We don't have a lot of time. We're not doing dramas either. So with all these deficiencies, we cannot give practical, perfect knowledge to anyone, nor can we ourselves, nor are we ourselves perfect. Therefore, we accept the Vedas as they are. From Sri Upanishad introduction. With all these deficiencies, we cannot give perfect knowledge to anyone, nor are we ourselves perfect. Therefore, we accept the Vedas as they are. The Upanishad. Upanishad means that knowledge which brings one closer. Sometimes it's translated it means to sit near to something. Just like we, we're studying the Ishopanishad. Isha means the Supreme. So Ishopanishad, to sit near to the Supreme. So the Upanishads, there are, there are 108 Upanishads, and of 108, 11 are very, uh, are very much uh, famous, more prominent than the others. But, and the most prominent of all of them, the one which is mentioned first over all others, is the Ishopanishad. So the Vedas deal mostly with fruitive activities to gradually elevate the general public from the field of sense gratification to a position on the transcendental plane, right? This is the purpose of the Vedas, to bring us up to the transcendental plane. From Prabhupada's purport, 245 Bhagavad Gita, when the activities for sense gratification, namely Karmakanda chapter are finished, then the chance for spiritual realization is offered in the form of the Upanishads. Upanishads mark the beginning of transcendental life, right? This is the beginning, transcendent, not the highest, it's just the beginning of transcendental life. Srimad Bhagavatam is the highest. Okay, and here's the summary of the Vedic knowledge. You can see here there are two sections on the top. There's the Shruti and the Smriti. Remember we spoke about Shruti this morning? Shruti means what process? Hearing, hearing process. Okay. Hearing. And Smriti is what? Remembering. Remembering, yes, right. So the Upanishads are from which section? Shruti, yes. Upanish, the Upanishads are from the Shruti. Hmm? Uh, let's go back. To, wait. What So the, the Upanishads are from the Shruti. Where's the Bhagavad Gita from? Shruti. Huh? Shruti. No. Gita Upanishad. Yes. It, uh, Bhagavad Gita is Gita Upanishad, but it's not Shruti. It's from Mahabharata. Mahabharata is not Shruti. The Shruti means the four Vedas. The four Vedas are the essence of the main part. And Upanishads are from the four Vedas. 
Bhagavad Gita is Smriti. And Srimad Bhagavatam, what about Srimad Bhagavatam? Where is that from? Smriti. Yes, the Puranas are all Smriti. Actually, we, we could argue and say because Bhagavad Gita is directly spoken by Krishna, so it's Shruti. But the scholars, the Vedantists, those people who you may be debating with, they won't accept. They won't accept like that. Therefore, Prabhupada gave us this Ishopanishad, very important, because Ishopanishad is directly Shruti, and nobody can argue about that. If you quote Bhagavad Gita, they'll say that's Smriti. We don't accept Smriti. Mayavadis, Gyanis, Vedantas, they won't accept Smriti. You have to give them Shruti. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada presented our Krishna conscious philosophy in both the Shruti and the Smriti by giving us the Ishopanishad. The Ishopanishad is Shruti, very important point to note. And that's why the Ishopanishad is a very important book for us. And we often may have to argue with people or debate with people who are Vedantists and they will not accept Smriti. They want to hear Shruti and you have to be able to give evidence from Shruti. So sometimes you will see in a purport, in Srila Prabhupada's purport, Prabhupada will state, it is stated in the Upanishad, and he will name Mundaka Upanishad or Kali Santara Upanishad. He will name some Upanishad and say, this is Vedic, that's Vedic evidence. But if we just simply quote Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, that is Smriti, and it's not acceptable by everyone. So you get these scholars who are like that. You have to, therefore we have to understand the importance of the Shruti. And that is why very early on in our movement, Srila Prabhupada had written the commentary and purports on the Ishopanishad. Is it clear? Any questions? You see, Mayavadi, Vedantas, Gyani, they won't accept Smriti. They won't accept Bhagavad Gita. They will accept Vedanta, but they will not accept Shruti. So this is why we give uh, great importance to the study of Ishopanishad. Now I'll be giving you the article that when we get, when I get the email address, when I get time, I'll send you the article. You'll get the article from Prabhu there in Bahrain, and he'll forward it to you. I want you all to read it. Because you have time, we're not having class every day. We're only having class few, a couple of nights a week. So you have time to read it. I want you all to read it carefully. It's taken from a, Bhagavad, uh, a Back to Godhead article. And it's very nice. And it explains very clearly the importance of the Ishopanishad. Okay. Prastana, Traya. Prastana means what? Prastana. Prastana. Prastana, we think of it more like evidence. Proof. Right? Therefore, the Vedanta Sutra is known as Nyaya Prastana. Nyaya, logic. Logic, the evidence of but on the basis of logic. Upanishads, however, are Shruti, because Upanishads are from Vedas, so they're Shruti. And the Gita, Mahabharat, Pura, Puranas are known as Smriti Prastana. From Adi Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita Purport. Is it clear? Mayavadi philosophers accept only Nyaya Prastana and Shruti Prastana, rejecting Smriti Prastana. Krishna consciousness movement completely authorized from Vedic principles, right? We accept not only the Shruti, 
we accept also the Smriti. Smr Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatriki Vidimbinam Aikantiki Harepakya Utpata Yaiva Kaupate. You know the verse? No. You've studied Isha, a nectar of devotion. You should have studied that verse. Somebody know that verse? Anybody? The meaning is devotional service which is performed on the basis of the Shruti, the Smriti, Puranas and the Itihasas, then it is authorized. But if it's not according to the Shruti, the Smriti, Puranas, Itihasas, then it's simply Utpata Yaivakop, it's simply a disturbance to society. It's not authorized devotional service. So it must be authorized from Vedic principles. Review. Overview of the Vedic literature and Upanishads. Well, we talked about the main two, two main divisions, the Shruti and the Smriti and the Upanishads. Remember the meaning? Upanishad means what? Sitting near the Lord. Yes, sitting near the Lord. Thank you. And why Prabhupada published Sri Upanishad? Anybody can tell me? This is uh, Shruti Adarit. Right, he wants to give us Shruti. We need to be able to have some Shruti evidence in presenting the Krishna conscious philosophy. If we just have only Smriti, then we're lacking. Therefore, in Prabhupada's purports, you get several verses where he quotes as Shruti. And the Ishopanishad is all Shruti. Three types of evidence, three pramanas, remember? Pramanas. Shabda Pramad and Pratyaksha Pramad. Okay. And then four defects of conditioned soul? Yes. Cheating. Limited senses. Okay, very good. And then reasons for ex reasons for accepting Vedic authority. Why should we accept Vedic authority? In the parampara system and Shruti uh, and Shruti. Because, because, because we're not perfect. We need some perfect guidance. A perfect guidance is coming from the Vedas. Everything is perfect. All the knowledge of the Vedas, perfect. Nobody can find any fault in the Vedic, in the Vedas. Right? Bhagavad Gita has been there for so many years. Can anybody prove anything wrong in the, in the Bhagavad Gita? Everything is perfect. So we accept everything on the basis of Vedic authority. What's the example Prabhupada gave? Recognizing father. Yeah, right, yes, very good. Want to know who's the father. You have to go to the mother. Vedas are the mother. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Okay, so we're going to go on to le lesson two, which is the invocation mantra. Have you all learned the mantra for the invocation? Are you familiar with that mantra? Very well known mantra. Yeah. Everybody, a... yes? Who would like to chant it for us? Lead the chanting. Hare, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Chandavar uh, Pranam to you. Yeah, go ahead, chant. Om Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purna, Purnamada Chere, Purnasya, Purnamadhaya, Purnameva Vasishere. You know the translation? Uh, yeah, I can read it, Maharaj. You haven't memorized it yet. No. no. Okay. You have to know the translations, remember? It's important. 
to also know the translations. Okay, so you can read it for us, Prabhu. Uh, the personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. And because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as a complete whole. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete by itself. And because he is the complete whole, even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. Okay, very good. Let me see. I have a... All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead. So I'll share the screen. And I have... Is anybody able to see this? Hare Krishna? Yes, Maharaj. Open. It's open? No, not yet open. You're not seeing anything? No, we are seeing the drive, the desktop drive actually where the file is stored. You have to click the file. Now we can see it. Hare Krishna? No, no Maharaj. No. Just double click on that. I double clicked on it. Yeah, from Maharaj then you have to go and share screen now and if the file is already open then you just have to follow the screen. Very tricky. I don't know what's wrong. It's not working well at all. At the moment, we are seeing only the folder, Maharaj. Oh, you can see the folders? Yes, only folder we are seeing. Yeah. You have to open the PPT and then you have to share the PPT. 
Okay, I've opened the PPT. Now what do I do? Now, you have to unshare this folder. Unshare it. Unshare the folder and share the PPT directly. Go back to the share screen, the green button, Maharaj, again. It says you are, I am screen sharing. Uh, you have to stop that, Maharaj. Oh. Just stop that screen sharing. Okay. Yeah, now we have to again share. Now? No. Uh, you have to share. Again, the same folder is being shared, Maharaj. So, what do I do? Uh, unshare the folder and then uh, you uh, separately open the PPT and share that PPT. Open the PPT, right? Uh, share the PPT. First open the PPT and then share it. Now it's open. Yeah, so yeah. then go to share screen. Then you can share that PPT. But now there's no button to show screen sharing. Uh, maybe you can... Alt tab, Maharaj. Alt tab, you will find your... You can minimize the PPT and share it. And share it. I know. Top panel, you can find share. Huh? The top panel, you can see the share. In the same screen. Right? Am I sharing? No, not yet, Maharaj. Maybe Maharaj can uh, send me the file if it is, uh, or the files which you feel. Even if it takes two minutes, we will be. Yeah. Now you see it? Yes, 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 one. Oh, at last. Okay, so slideshow. Okay, we all chanted the verse, right? You know the verse, you're familiar with the verse? Om Purnam Adha Adha Om Prabhupada gives his own unique translation of Om the complete whole then Purnam perfectly complete Adha that that complete whole. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purn Right? This is the verse. That complete whole. Very important. Very powerful statement. The complete whole is perfectly complete. The Supreme Lord has to be perfectly complete. Prabhupada said he has to be everything within our experience and beyond it. That is the meaning of the complete whole. We have limited experience, but the Supreme Lord has unlimited ex He knows everything. So He's complete he's, and He's perfect. Not only complete, but perfect. Prabhupada explains. Someone can read for us. If three ways of us are 
if he were less than his creation in any other way he could not be complete the complete whole must contain everything both within and beyond our experience otherwise he cannot be complete shri ishobanishad invoke Purna, perfectly complete. Uh, the phenomenal world is perfectly complete. Everything is there in the world for the maintenance of the world. It's all provided by the grace of the Supreme. All emanations from Him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as a complete whole. Examples. The universe itself is perfect, complete. We see so many living entities. The elephant has to eat so many kilos of food every day. The ant also has to get his grains of sugar. They're all provided for. Who's providing for everyone? We're not providing for everyone. Someone's providing for us. That is the Supreme Lord. He is complete and everything which comes from Him is also complete. Draw examples from nature of the completeness of this world. We'll see some examples from Prabhupada's preaching. Someone read? Purnam, everything is complete. Purnam idam. idam. Although the ocean's water, uh, ocean waters so much when there is scarcity of water, you have take help of Krishna. He will evaporate the water, he will make it cloud. Then when it falls down, then it becomes sweet. Otherwise you cannot touch. Everything is complete. So, Prabhupada's English, can you understand? The water from the ocean it comes in the form of clouds. This, from the ocean, the water is evaporated, taken up in the form of clouds. And then the clouds come and pour the water on the land. And when the water falls down onto the land, that time it's not salt anymore, it becomes sweet. From the ocean, it's salt, but it, then the rainwater is not salty. So this is Krishna's perfect arrangement. Everything perfect. Another example. Someone read. As soon as the child is born, immediately there is pro profuse milk in the breast of the mother. That is a nature's arrangement. Before birth, the food the child immediately requires the mother's breast. There is milk supply immediately. Yes, there is milk supply immediately. Ladies who have given birth, they've experienced like that, right? When the child is born, then the milk begins to flow, they can feed their child. It's nature's arrangement. Please read. Thus this phenomenal world is also complete in itself. The 24 elements of which this material universe is a temporary manifestation are arranged to produce everything necessary for the maintenance and the subsistence of the universe. Yeah, the maintenance and subsistence of this universe is all arranged. Who did it? We didn't do anything. It's the person behind Every, the world who's done it. There's a personality, a creator, a manager, perfect manager who's arranged everything for the maintenance of this world. So this is the nature of the Supreme Lord. Please read. No 
before that, even in the universe, need make any extra effort to try to maintain the universe. Yeah. No other unit in the universe need make an extraneous effort to try to maintain the universe. <laughs> well, what could we do to help to maintain the universe? We're only good at destroying the universe. We only create the problems on the planet. We don't do any good for the planet. Everything, the good things were all done by the Lord Himself. But we, could, we bring the problems to the planet. Please read. The human form of life is a complete manifestation of the consciousness of living and time. Yes, right. Human form of life, special. Why is it special? What's the difference between the human form of life and the other forms of life? Someone? Hmm? Human can think, animals don't think. Oh, wrong. Very wrong. Animals do think. Conscious, the consciousness, Maharaj, the consciousness has developed in human beings. And How is the consciousness developed? Uh, we can think about the God and we can uh, go to the spiritual path. Yes, right. Or, That's higher consciousness, right? When we think about spirituality, think about our purpose here. What is animal consciousness? Eating, uh, mating, defending and uh, sleeping. Yes, eating, sleeping, mating and defending. That is the animal conscious. And for human beings who are only eating, sleeping, mating and defending, then they are no better than animal. But human form of life is the complete manifestation of consciousness. That we have, we have some intelligence, we're given facilities different from the other forms of life. We're given this great opportunity in the human form of life, very special, right? So this is uh, from all the forms of life that we can inquire, who am I? Why am I here? What's the purpose of my life? The animals only, they can only think, where is food? Where is sleep? Where is the mate, mating? And where is the defending? That's animal life. Purnasya Purnamadaya, even though so many complete units emanate from him, Purnam eva vashishyate, he remains the complete balance. So amazing. So, just like we have a book. We have a book and if we take a page out, you know, you may have a Bhagavad Gita, maybe it's old and gets a bit broken and the pages start falling out and you may lose a page. It's not complete anymore, right? We become incomplete. So, material things are incomplete. But Krishna is Purnam, he's complete and he remains complete, even though so many complete units emanate from him. What are these units? Some units like the universes which are emanating from him, different universes, everything's coming from him. But he rem he's not He's not reduced in any way, even though so many things come from him. He remains complete. Prabhupada gives an example. Someone can read for me? In the spiritual world, the one is Purna and if you take the whole one, it is still one. That they cannot understand, the poor brain. They think material. If the one is complete and if one is taken away, then it becomes zero. Right. 
So Prabhupada's talking spiritual mathematics. Spiritual mathematics. One plus one equals how many? One minus one. Yes. And one minus one equals? One. Yes. Very good. A hundred percent. Your spiritual mathematics is very perfect. In the spiritual world, one is complete. And if you take the one, it is still one. If you take away that one, you, they cannot understand. The poor brain, they think materially. If one is complete and if one is taken away, it becomes zero. So Prabhupada said, what kind of God is zero? No. Some people, some people are thinking like that God is zero. No. God is not zero. He's complete. Perfect. Someone else read now? Hare Krishna Maharaj, what kind of God is only zero? Upanishad says, Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Evaya Shishyate. If the complete, you take the complete. The complete remains. Conversation with Professor Hopkins, July 13, 1975, Philadelphia. If from the complete, you take the complete, the complete remains. It's inconceivable, right? Because, but God is not zero. He's complete. <laughs> we take, we, even we take God away, He's still there. He's still complete. Just like Lord Brahma took away all the cows and cowherd boys. <laughs> But still, they were there. So Prabhupada, is, he gave this example and to this Professor Hopkins in America, understanding God. People don't know these things. Krishna expands millions of times. Still, he's Krishna. Please read, someone. Krishna is so good that even Krishna expands million times. Still, is the same thing, Krishna. Bhagavatam 1.5.18, New Vrindavan 22.6.1969. Purnam eva vashishyate. Right? This is the part. Purnam eva vashishyate. He's complete. That so many things are coming from him, still he's the same, still he's Krishna. So this is a very basic point which is made here. This invocation mantra, actually this invocation mantra is not really part of the Ishopanishad. It's not like if you go to the Veda and find this Ishopanishad in the Veda, you, you'll find Om Purnam. You won't find this. But the, generally they put this mantra there as an invocation for the, for the Ishopanishad. He will eat everything, but keep everything. Please read someone. Just like here, some kids do offer to Krishna God. But he will leave everything for us, you as Prasad. You're missing out, you missed out a bit. Just like here, something being offered to Krishna, to God, he will eat it. But. Yeah. He will leave everything for you as Prasad. How? Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Avashishyate. This is God's power. He will keep everything, but He will keep everything for you as Prasad. That is our good fortune. That He will eat everything, but still there will be Prasada. Now we're going to talk about completeness, because we said He's complete. You know, are we complete? 
the illusory representation of completeness. We make efforts to utilize the resources of nature to create a so-called complete life of sense enjoyment. Right? Complete life of sense enjoyment. Do you make arrangements for that? Generally everybody does, right? We all want to be complete. We like to have everything comfortable. Everything should be organized. It should be there, complete. There should be money, there should be food and water, there should be comfort, there should be nice association. We try to make our life very complete, comfortable. But this illusory representation of completeness cannot fully satisfy us. Although we try, we're always feeling that there's something lacking, some incompleteness. We gave the example this morning when we were giving Bhagavatam class. Maybe you heard it. We were talking about Srila Vyasadev, that he wrote so many books. He wrote the Puranas, he summarized the Vedas in the Vedanta, and he wrote Mahabharata, but he still felt incomplete. He felt something missing. This is common experience in life. Here, look at this, you know this place, right? What's happening here? Cremation. Yes, right. That's the burning gut. Maybe banana is somewhere like that, you see? So this is uh, generally when we start to feel some incompleteness in our life, when we lose somebody. We lose one of our family members, a relative or some friend or something. Then at that time we become more, uh, we, we, we reflect, we think more about life. When we're at the, when we're at the, the burning gap like this place, then at that time we're much more uh, open-minded and we, we, we can understand more about the nature of the material world and how there is incompleteness there. Makes us reflect more, think more deeply about life. Maybe during this COVID also, during this time of the COVID virus, where people are becoming infected and like, that's another opportunity for us to reflect on our incompleteness in our own life. Anybody has any realizations about this incompleteness? incompleteness. We're thinking, we're trying to be complete, you know, we do make a lot of plans and arrangements. We have our families, we have our home, we have our property, we have a car, these things. We're trying to be complete, we get the children educated, but still there's always something just missing. It's like Mother Yashoda binding up Krishna Mother Yashoda was tying up Krishna, she was always two inches short, two fingers short, right? So that incompleteness is there. So how can the invocation of Sri Yashopanishad help to make our lives complete? Anybody like to answer? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, by knowing the relation of ours with the Lord, by recognizing the Lord Krishna. Yes. Would you like to say a bit more? How can we develop a relationship with Krishna? By studying the Veda, uh, scriptures from the Guru, Parampara. Mm -hmm. Yes. Someone else? Would, yes. Uh, 
recognizing the Lord as the proprietorship. Uh huh. How would you do that? How will you recognize the Lord as the proprietor? Um, By gratitude, surrendering ourselves to Lord. Yes, we if if he's the proprietor, we have to respect his proprietorship, right? We have to offer everything to him. The house becomes his. Everything becomes his. Anything else? Lord Krishna is complete or is what? Lord Krishna is complete or is own. He's infinite or he's complete or is own. He's complete on his own, yeah, but we want to know but what yeah. about our life? How can we make our life complete? By by realizing that he is complete, we also be complete. By realizing that Lord Krishna is complete and we as individual souls, we also realize that we also be complete. Then we may think we are Krishna. We may end up thinking I'm Krishna. I'm one with Krishna. I'm Krishna. I am also Krishna. Yes? When we realize that uh, Krishna is complete whole, and uh, we are a part of a uh, small, invisible part of uh, Krishna. And when we surrender ourselves to Krishna completely and uh, serve, uh, do the devotional service for Krishna and thinking only for Krishna always, then uh, it can help, this invocation will help us in uh, making our life complete. Okay. And we can achieve our goal of life. Yes, this is good. Mm -hmm. We express uh, gratitude to Krishna for everything, what we see, what we do. Very good. What, yeah, how will we express the gratitude? Like, uh, uh, if I come to the job, it is Krishna, you have given me this opportunity that I am doing my job. Please help me to discharge my, dis uh, my, my duties. When we see the sun in the morning, or like when we get up from the bed, like, you know, I have seen one more day. Krishna, thank you. Where I can serve you more. Okay. Or remember Krishna tributes anywhere, like we this one. It's the energy coming from Krishna, and you know, the moon in the night. Then it is uh, because of Krishna's uh, the light, because you know the coming from Krishna. Okay. Yes. In every mood we see Krishna's tributes. Okay, seeing everything in relation to Krishna. When you drink water, you think? Yeah, taste, yes. Yes? Taste. Okay, good. Yes. So, yes? Uh, and also, like, uh, by accepting the situations in our life, whatever comes, uh, it, is, it is basically the arrangement of the Lord for us. So, if we accept him the proprietorship, then whatever comes in our life, we have to accept that this is by the grace of the Lord. Yes, if you can do that, it's very good. It's not easy, of course. Yeah, in the hard times it's difficult, but uh, like, but if we keep this attitude, maybe like our our patience and our uh, acceptance uh, for the situation comes. Okay. Yes, we do need to train ourselves to see everything as Krishna's arrangement, to understand that Krishna is the supreme controller. But at the same time, Srimad Bhagavatam talks about how a devotee accepts everything to be reactions due to his past deeds. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so. Some, it's a, another alternative way of view, viewing things, that you see everything like that. Okay, any other comments on this? We'll go. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandabhat Pranam. Yes, Dandabhat Pranams. Yeah, uh, Maharaj, uh, I, I believe more in practical implementation than philosophy. Okay, very good. So, so in that way, first of all, 
what ever i am suppose i am doing or i am eating or i am doing let that directly or indirectly connected with krishna like the bhakti vinod thakur that the tomaro sansar er jonno kori ami uparjon means i am earning money even to maintain your family so that's so that implementation necessary in our practical life like i have to do that then whatever i see is very difficult at the initial stage to think this is made by krishna or myself that or uh, it is done by krishna to understand that philosophy instead of that let me serve the way uh, parampara or krishna has said to his devotees because that is the easiest process if we serve a vaishnava or if you serve, serve any uh, devotee of krishna easiest process with our purgatory principle to get attached with krishna because then mercy comes immediately so w- what is the easiest process just simply serving krishna of, of course the what regulatory principle we are doing that to follow that and serve the devotee of krishna as his representative serve the devotee of krishna as his representative yes in that mood regardless either he is a he is a devotee or he is a non devotee so in that way we will have panditaha samadarshina equal for everyone that mentally mood will develop if we can do that okay yes so in that in that way we will be able to come out from our ego <laughs> yes become the servant yes become servant so is a complete humbleness from attitude and mahaprabhu said one is completely humble and thinks lower than a grass then only in that concept of mind one can chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare then only possible and that hare krishna mahaprabhu if we can in that mood when we chant then everything will be perfect no need to worry for anything all right that's what i feel okay very good serve the devotees and serve even the non devotees be the servant of everyone of course we have to serve krishna also Said for following four regulatory principle itself and chanting our regulatory sixteen uh, rounds, that which is chanting itself is our make make ourselves to serve to Krishna and his devotee. Sometimes people say servant of everyone. Prabhupada said servant of everyone means servant of none, because you can't serve everyone. Of course, our service is very limited. Huh? No, Maharaj. Here, what the first to serve my. personal understanding first serve to guru and to follow his instruction so then comes and and in this case might be it will be very hard to hear that if i can please the instruction of my guru then automatically guru will not say anything other than scripture what says or serving to krishna so if i first because guru is physically bop is in front of me so if i can concentrate my mind at the lotus feet of guru to serving and follow his instruction then automatically krishna will be pleased because guru will not say other than serve to krishna anything okay but guru yes. guru will also say worship krishna <laughs> definitely that if i have taken my guru's instruction whole heartedly deep from my heart then automatically i'll do it for the pleasing of guru's instruction then automatically i'll serve to krishna because my guru said yes okay all right let's go ahead we have to go on Shrila Prabhu is talking. So long as we are attached to Krishna, someone read, please. Just like a big, big machine, and there is a small screw. The 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 complete the completeness of that small screw is to fit in the particular place. Then it has got value. And if it is out of touch of the machine, it has no value. So we are complete units. So long. we are attached to krishna otherwise use this yes professor lecture in april 27 1970 pro yes yeah, can i give one my one practical example okay uh thank you moras moras this incident happened few days before uh this is my own realization uh suddenly out of we see many times but sometimes something click so i came out from the office and i saw that one screw is falling down so when i saw that here uh, recently when we have um, we have a sabana utshav in iskon so that time i remember that uh, even some the same example and i seen that screw i said oh this screw might be part of that machine 
And since it is isolated from the machine, this screw has no value and it is falling on the street, no one gives attention. So similarly, then I thought myself, if I am get disconnect from Krishna, this will be my situation. I'll be falling on the street, no one will be give attention. <laughs> but if I'm connected with the screw, with the machine, then the utility machine will give to the human, uh, human uh, goodness. That will, many people will be benefited. Okay. I realized myself during that time, that if I am connected with my instruction with Gurus and Krishna, then I will be also part of screw in that machine. Yes. And if I detach from the Krishna, I will be following on the road without any attention from anyone. Yes, very good. Very nice. Okay. So let's see what we covered here today. Effectively presented. I hope we effectively presented. One, the principle of the existence of Supreme Personality of Godhead on the basis of the statement Om Purnam Ada, the principle of the existence of God, the, the, everything perfect, everything complete, that which is the complete whole is complete. The complete whole is Om and the Purnam complete. So God is complete, He's not lacking in any way. So the, there is God, there is a personality there in the world. The nature of the spiritual potencies of the Supreme Person with reference to Purnam Eva Vashishate. Who would like to respond? What is the nature of the spiritual potencies? Someone can tell us spiritual arithmetic. The, even though God expect, is everyone there? Can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so long as you're hearing me, I can't hear any of you. I didn't hear any of you respond. You know, anyway, nature nature of God's spiritual potencies that He can expand Himself unlimitedly, but He still remains complete. And so many units come from him, but he's not diminished in any way, he's still complete, right? So that is his spiritual potency, that he's always complete, he's Purnam. The complete nature of the phenomenal world with examples. What were some of the examples of the phenomenal, phenomenal world being complete? Sea and uh, sea salt and the water, clouds and then it forms uh, clouds and the water falls and water is free. Right. That is a complete. Uh, of, you know. But there's milk. Uh, yes. The ocean also, the ocean, the sea ocean. Uh -huh. If we take the water of so many, it is remain complete. Okay. And somebody said also. We need to put extraneous effort to maintain the universe. Right, no need to put extraneous effort. The mother also, the baby's born, baby can eat anything, but mother's milk is there. Mother's providing the milk for the baby. Krishna arranges for everyone, for the maintenance of everyone. See, the young baby's born, can't drink anything else, can't do anything else but take the mother's milk. And Krishna arranges. Then we reflected on experiences of feeling incomplete in our own lives, incomplete. You know, we, 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 some, we feel, you know, we tried so hard to do something and somehow it just doesn't work and people just complain and no good. And so like that, incompleteness. Srila Vyasadeva was the example I gave. He'd written so many books, but he still felt incomplete. Why? Because he had not properly glorified Krishna and the process of devotional service. So this is what's really lacking in our life. When we feel the incompleteness, it's because we've forgotten Krishna. What can we draw from the invocation of Sri Upanishad which could help us to make our lives complete? Right? We reflected that we could offer everything to Krishna. 
understand how everything has come from him. Every, he's the proprietor, recognizing him as a proprietor. Anyone else? Okay, the cause of all causes, seeing him, it's all something, something goes wrong with him, well, it's Krishna's mercy, <laughs> right? When the cooking's no good, we say Krishna's mercy, and when the, cook, when the cooking's good, we say, I cooked, <laughs> I did it. And so, give the credit to Krishna, right? That's important. Completeness. Oh. All services in this world, whether social, political, communal, international, or even interplanetary, will remain incomplete unless or until they are dovetailed with the complete whole from Sri Ishopanishad invocation. <laughs> so, it, it's all incomplete unless we connect it to Krishna, Krishna consciousness. That's the important point. Oh, okay. So, that's the end of that. Let's see. How are we doing? Okay, we've got some time left. So, are there any questions from anyone? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, uh, we understand that Krishna is uh, supreme and complete. But, uh, you know, some scientists will argue and they give the logic that uh, the milk in the uh, mother's breast comes due to some hormones and all. So, sub such type of logics they give. So, how to counteract these logics? Yeah, there will always be people like these scientists, atheistic, they don't want to surrender to Krishna. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, four kinds of people will never surrender to him. So, how to counteract their atheistic arguments? We just, what, what can we say? You know, why should we waste our time preaching to these atheistic people? Uh, how to counteract their arguments? We can simply say that you say hormones, who made the hormones? Where did the hormones come from? Who arranged for them? The husband didn't arrange for the hormones, and the wife didn't arrange for the hormones, where did they come from? Right? We have to understand behind everything is the hand of the Supreme Lord. So, it, Arguments can go on eternally like that. We don't like to waste our time arguing with these kind of people, but still we do have arguments to defeat them. We just simply mention like that. Where does it, where do the hormones come from? You say the hormones come, the, the milk comes due to the hormones. And who arranged for the hormones? Who put them there in the body? They were there in the body. Who arranged for them? We have to understand there is some very wonderful arrangements in the material world, material bodies. They're all arranged. There's a design, very intricate system of design within the human body. And the male and the female species, how they're arranged, that they can combine with each other and reproduce. Who arranges all these things? It's arranged by the Supreme Lord, by the Supreme Intelligent Being. So we're trying to convince people like that, that there's a Supreme Intelligent Being behind the universe. Actually, in this regard, there's a very, very good 
uh, movie, uh, film on YouTube and uh, I have the, the website and I'll forward that also with the email and I request all of you, you know, when you get a chance, go to the YouTube and have a look at this video and it, it mentions, it's 20 minutes long and it's describing about proof of the existence of God, evidence and, or just logical arguments to show how there must be God, there must be a person there within the universe. It's a very nice little movie made by an Indian man and shows very clearly how God, that there's some, so much intelligence behind the universe, there has to be some very intelligent person behind it all. It's not just by chance. You see, the people say, oh, hormones, in other words, they're saying just by chance, everything's just by chance. The Prabhupada said, nothing is by chance. There's a reason for everything. So we want people to understand that. We're presenting these arguments to people. And as we study the Vedic literature, we see how wonderful this philosophy is, how it can answer all the questions people have. When I came to Krishna Consciousness, I came with so many questions and they could answer all of my questions. But be before becoming a devotee, nobody could answer questions. Nobody gave me answers. Nobody could satisfy me. That's why I was convinced to take up Krishna consciousness. I got all the answers. Everything is explained logically. As, uh, as it says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, if you are actually interested in logic and philosophy, then kindly apply it to the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you'll find it to, to be strikingly wonderful. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Harikrishna. Okay. Any other question there? So we're, we're meeting next on Sunday night, right? Yes, Maharaj. We're meeting on Sunday night uh, and also we're going to meet on Wednesday night. So we're going to go on Sunday night, we're going to go on to Mantra 1. And then uh, Tuesday night from being mantra two. Let's go back and just review what we covered tonight. We were speaking about the potencies of the Supreme Lord, how he has his potencies, this Purnam potency that he's not diminished in any way. Even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. We could call this also, this is his inconceivable potency or achintya shakti. Achintya shakti. This is something which scientists, material scientists cannot understand, they cannot accept that there are such things as a chincha shakti. Can you think of some examples within the universe of a chincha shakti? Everyday examples, things we see every day. Yes? The light and heat generated by the sun. Yes. Very good. That's the obvious example. The light of the sun that's uh, giving so much energy every day. Is there. Sunlight and the you're breaking. <laughs> Your mic, yeah. You have a problem with that mic. Yeah, the, the rays of the sun uh, coming constantly for so many years in, you know, 
how many years has the sun been emanating the rays of its light uh, without diminishing? There's no, no fire in this world which can compare to the light of the sun, the heat of the sun, the energy coming from the sun. It is inconceivable. And we see other, many other examples, for example, atoms, how they're very small, pervading everything, supporting everything. And within the atom, there is Krishna, the super soul. He's within everything. He's everywhere. So that's Krishna. He has this inconceivable potency. Of course, people like to, uh, you know, we were talking about the Vedantists, you know, Vedantists particularly, people like Ramakrishna Mission, they, they call themselves Vedantists usually. They don't usually present themselves so much as the Ramakrishna Mission nowadays. They simply call themselves Vedantists and uh, they will not accept the Shruti, they will not accept Bhagavad Gita. They will simply talk about the Upanishads and they're very fond of some Upanishads like Mandaka Upanishad, they're very fond of. But we can quote Ishopanishad, we can quote the Ishopanishad to them, Om Purnam Adapurnam. Of course, they may say, well that's that mantra, that's not actually Upanishad. But we will see the first mantra tomorrow. First mantra, the first mantra tomorrow is the Ishopanishad. And there are, other, there are other statements in the Upanishads which are very good. One, one verse which is often quoted in presenting the Vaishnava philosophy based on the Shruti is Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam Eko Bahunam Yovidati Kama. This is a statement from the Upanishads. It says, amongst all eternal beings, there's one supreme eternal. And amongst all conscious beings, there's one supreme conscious being. And that one supreme Lord is maintaining the needs of everyone. And this is Vedas. The Vedas speaks like that. You see, Prabhupada was explaining that the Vedas, generally, the Upanishads, it's the first step in transcendence. So the first step of, in transcendence is not going to speak too much about God. Just like you'll see in the Upanishad, in this Ishopanishad, we're not going to hear about Krishna. We're not going to hear the word Krishna mentioned, you're just going to talk about Om and the Supreme, like that. Indirectly, we're going to mention Krishna. We're going to mention about the impersonal and removing the impersonal. There'll be a prayer, please remove the dazzling effulgence, let me come and see your eternal form. So this is the Upanishads, this is what the Upanishads are like. They're presenting an introduction to transcendence. It's like the beginning of transcendence. Because this is, this is the Shruti. Actually, the real meaning to the Shruti cannot be understood without the Smriti. So the Smriti is very important. Without having the Smriti, without having books like Bhagavad Gita and so on, We'll never understand the Shruti. We'd never understand the Vedas. So very important for us. But, you know, you've got these people, they want they are only Shruti, only Shruti. Okay, so here is Ishopanisha. Take it. <laughs> Read it. This is Shruti. This is Vedas. Okay? So, any other question? Any comment? Maharaj, this uh, uh, Dandavat Pranam, I have this uh, question. 
कवि Yes, Kali Santara Upanishad. Upanishad is all Shruti, right? The Kali Santara Upanishad is Shruti. That's a Vedic statement, right? So it's there in the in the in the Vedas. Kali Santara Upanishads. Iti so dasha kam nam nam kali kamasha nasha nam. Mataparataropaya sarva vedishu drishate. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Yeah, this is Vedic mantra. But actually Vedas, I think they put Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. That's it in the Veda. So Vedic mantras, Vedic mantras are only supposed to be chanted by Brahmanas. Vedic Brahmanas. Therefore Lord Chaitanya put Krishna first. He said, now anybody can chant it because the Brahmanas were complaining. They said, oh, this is, this is a Vedic mantra. You're giving the Maha Mantra to everybody to chant. This is a Vedic mantra. So Lord Chaitanya put Krishna first. And they said, Hare Krishna, then Hare Rama. So he said, now everybody can chant. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. All right. This invitation mantra is in other Upanishads also. I, I read it also in Prakat Tavanyaka Upanishad 5.1. What is that? This invocation mantra, this invocation mantra, yes, appears, appears in the Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. It's often used. It's often used. Very well known verse. Well known. It's in many scriptures. Mm -hmm. All right. So time is up. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about my problems with the technical technical side. I'm not so familiar with this Zoom and using PowerPoint. You know, usually I just give class, so I'm not, I've forgotten how to use the PowerPoint. I may well try to be more familiar next time. Okay, Prabhus, thank you very much. So, have a good night. Srila Prabhus. Hare Krishna.